Hey friends, welcome back to another egg white bread experimentation video. There's a new ingredient that I had the idea of using in the egg bread and I've already started playing around with it, but there's still some work to be done. So I thought I would bring you along on the rest of the experimenting. The ingredient is acacia fiber, acacia fiber powder. So a few weeks ago, I did a video where I did a bunch of add-ins and showed the different results. And one of the ones that I used was inulin fiber. And I really like the texture and the taste that it gave to the bread. But what I didn't like was what it did digestively. A lot of people don't handle inulin well, and I am one of those people. So I wasn't really excited about adding it to my diet regularly. But I was trying to think through other types of ingredients that I could add that might have a similar effect and not give the same kind of gut distress that the inulin gives. And I thought of acacia fiber because there's actually several different things that I have used recently that have acacia fiber in them. One of them being the Vital Proteins Creamer, uh, collagen creamer and a lot of the different powdered fats that you can get they need some kind of a fiber or a protein to make the fat into a powder they can't just take fat and powder it they have to have something that has fiber or protein in it to make that work and a lot of times they use the acacia fiber so since i already had it in my diet and already i, I mean i never noticed any issues with it i thought it might be a good one to try so i ordered it a while back and it's been sitting here waiting Waiting for me to start playing with it and I'm finally getting to it so basically I have already made two loaves um, two attempts and so I will show you those and then let you know where we're going from there so here are my first two attempts basically what I did is I took my go-to bread recipe which I have a video on and I will link that up in the cards if you're not familiar but it is my basic my best most basic bread recipe it uses either yolk powder or whole egg powder to give the really nice texture in the bread. But it's also a very simple recipe. It doesn't have a lot of add-ins. It has the fewest ingredients to get a really good bread. And so I use that kind of as my base. And then I build off of there when I'm experimenting. So basically what I did is I took my go-to bread recipe, I used the yolk powder option, and I added two tablespoons of acacia fiber powder to that recipe. I added it at the beginning. It doesn't have any fat in it, so it didn't hinder the bread or the batter whipping up at all. And you can see the texture of the bread here. It's not bad. The bubbles are a little bit smaller than I would like, but it's, it's not bad at all. Um, I will mention that I did get like a wet texture when it first came out of the oven. It kind of had that wet sound. It went away after one night because I made these yesterday. Um, it went away pretty well after one night, but uh, when it first came out of the oven, it just kind of had that wet feeling and that wet sound when you squished it. I'll cut off a slice here and give you the squishability test and the squeeze test. So you can see when I press it down, it actually holds the press and the print really, really well. So it definitely, the fiber does definitely give it that like melt in your mouth type feel that you want when you're eating something that's supposed to be like bread. Without the acacia fiber, this recipe, um, it kind of bounces back like a sponge where you press it down and it pops back to its original shape. I showed you that in the other comparison video where I crumpled the piece of bread all up and then opened it back up and it was almost exactly the same as it looked before I crumpled it. But for it to have that nice bread feel in your mouth, you really kind of want it to dissolve in your mouth a little bit. You want it to squish and steak squished instead of like bouncing back like a sponge. So I'm gonna show you the crumple test on this one. You can see it crumples really well and opening it back up it's still pretty smushed. It's not popping right back. So that definitely shows me that the acacia fiber gives it a good um, mouth feel and a good like melt in your mouth feel. So definitely a win on that one. As far as flavor, I noticed just a tiny bit different of a flavor in the bread than without the acacia fiber. 
Um, but it was not off-putting. It's not strong. It's not, you know, like flax seeds and coconut flour. They can have a really, really strong taste. But this acacia fiber did not have a strong taste at all. So I was very happy with that. The flavor was quite pleasant. So I was happy with my first loaf that we were off on the right track. I did um, think that it would probably be better with uh, some of the arrowroot starch because that takes away that wet feeling um, at the beginning. Just that little bit of starch kind of soaks up all of the extra moisture and it just gives it a little bit better of a texture. So I wanted to play with adding more things besides just the acacia fiber. So what I did was I added all the same things that I added to my butter bun recipe, which is a quarter teaspoon of xanthan gum and two tablespoons of arrowroot. So that was my second attempt and it actually turned out quite bad. You can see that we moved all the way back to memory foam with this. The texture is very wet. It was quite an unpleasant experience. This will definitely be uh, chopped up and dried out and turned into protein power flour for other recipes. So I know for sure that adding all three, the acacia fiber, arrowroot, and xanthan gum in the amounts that I added is a no-go. I do want to do another loaf and try omitting the xanthan gum because that is what I have found turns the bread back into memory foam if you add too much. And um, I think I'm going to just try with the acacia fiber and with the two tablespoons of arrowroot and see if I can improve on this a little bit more and get that wet feeling taken away, but not get a memory foam. I have my one and a half cups of water in the bowl, and that's 354 milliliters. And now I'm gonna add my 100 and, whoa, 120 grams of egg white powder, egg white protein powder, dried egg whites, they're all the same thing, as long as egg whites and sometimes sunflower lecithin are the only ingredients, you're good to go. Although if you do have a egg white protein with sunflower lecithin, I have found that it takes longer to whip up. So don't be worried if you whip it up for the five minutes and it's still liquid, keep going. Hopefully it will whip up for you. Next, I'm adding a quarter cup of allulose and that should be about 36 grams. Half teaspoon of cream of tartar, half teaspoon of Redmond real salt two tablespoons of arrowroot starch, which comes out to 16 grams, and two tablespoons of the acacia fiber powder that also comes out to 16 grams. The acacia fiber is a little bit darker in color. It's got a like a tan, yellowy tan color. And so it does color the batter a little bit. I didn't notice a huge difference in the end result of the bread, but the batter definitely looks darker. The last ingredient I'm gonna add at the end after it's already mixed up is the yolk powder. Definitely don't add the yolk powder now or else it will not whip up correctly. I'm gonna start the mixer out on low and gradually increase the speed to maximum and then whip it on the max speed for five minutes. All right, five minutes is up. Now I'm gonna add the yolk powder. I am doing one tablespoon, which is the same amount that I use for my go-to bread recipe. I find that the less of the yolk powder or the powdered fat, because I use different powdered fats in different recipes, but the less of this that I add, the closer the end result is to memory foam. And the more that I add, the bigger the bubbles in the bread, but also if you get too much, it makes it kind of an eggy texture. So one tablespoon is what I found works really well without the acacia fiber, but I may have to adjust that um, depending on how this loaf turns out. We will just have to see and keep experimenting if necessary. 
one tablespoon is about six grams. I'm just gonna mix this up on low just until it's combined. You don't want to whip it at this point at all. And as soon as the yolk powder gets in here, the batter will start deflating a little bit. And that's not a bad thing. It actually helps the texture. You just don't want it to deflate too much. So you want to move fairly quickly at this point. While the batter was mixing, I got my pan ready with parchment paper. And I do have a video on how I get my parchment paper to lay down like that. And I will put that up in the cards. And I also started my oven preheating. So as soon as I get this batter in here, my oven should be ready to go at 325. Just want to make sure all the batter down at the bottom got mixed with that yolk powder real well. Just going to form this into my pan. Try not to get any giant air bubbles in the bread. Oven is preheated, perfect timing. Just trying to get this a little bit pretty. The batter isn't deflating very fast, so I have plenty of time here, but um, when the batter doesn't deflate fast, it's a sign that it might be too much like memory foam, so we'll see how this goes. Good enough. I'm gonna throw this into the oven for 40 minutes. So I actually went ahead and whipped up another batch and the only change I made from the last one that I just showed you is that I added two tablespoons of yolk powder instead of one. And I just wanted to see if the texture comes out a little better with that little bit extra fat from the yolk powder and uh, maybe it'll give it some bigger holes in the bread so it's not quite so tight. All right, here is the first one. Looks amazing. And this is the one with just one tablespoon of yolk powder. And here is the loaf with two tablespoons of yolk powder. All right, here are my first two attempts. Here are my second two attempts. This is the one with one tablespoon of yolk powder. This is the one with two. So let's cut open the one with one tablespoon of yolk powder first and see what kind of a texture we get. Texture's not looking too bad, but it is pretty tight of a foam but not as tight as this one. This one was like full on memory foam. There it is. Oh, it's still got that little bit of a wet sound as it just came out of the oven. Um, even with the two tablespoons of arrowroot, it still has that little bit of wetness in it. Less, I think, than this one did, but still there. But that does usually go away after it's you know stored overnight. Let's give it a little rip up here so you can see that. That's what it looks like inside. I'll give it a little taste test here. The taste is really good. I like the flavor a lot. The arrowroot adds to the flavor. And then the um, acacia fiber, it adds a little bit of a flavor and it's all good. And I think the acacia fiber makes the bread really soft and um, it's really easy to swallow. That's one thing, it's not choky. I think the acacia fiber does help with the chokiness. It definitely, has the it passes the press test and definitely I'm sure it's gonna pass the scrunch test the crumple test whatever you want to call it there's no getting this back to its original shape it's pretty pretty mushed so that's good I think it's a really good bread the texture is a little bit fine so it's a little closer to memory foam that I would like so I'm interested to see what the two tablespoons of yolk powder did 
But as far as flavor, it's really, really good. So with this bread, I'm finding that as I experiment, it's like a balance between adding in the fats, like the yolk powder, the whole egg powder, butter powder, anything like that. And then also adding enough of the stabilizers like arrowroot or xanthan gum or acacia fiber, inulin fiber, that kind of thing. Um, you got to get the right balance. If you get too much of the fat, it deflates the bread too much. So you have to have some kind of a stabilizer in there. But if you get too much of the stabilizer, it doesn't let the fat do the work of making the nice texture. So it makes it more of a memory foam. So it really is a balance there that you just have to work with. It's kind of like a science experiment every time. All right, let's see what this one looks like in here. Ooh, I think the bubbles are a little bit bigger, not a ton though. And it's interesting, I got a little bit didn't mix in. I got some streaks and some marbling of the uh, whiter batter, but where the uh, yolk powder mixed in, you can see the, um, the bubbles are a little bit bigger. You can see on this one, the bubbles are just a little bit bigger than this one, but really not a lot. I was expecting more of a difference with double the amount of yolk powder. This one I think has less of the wet feel and um, sound, like when you squish it, it's still got a little bit, but it definitely is less. All right, I'm gonna taste this one. Again, the taste on this one is really good. The two tablespoons of yolk powder didn't make it taste too eggy or anything. The flavor is excellent, very easy to swallow very not choky. The crust is, um, it's got a little bit of chew to it, but it is really good. I think the crust is the best part actually. I'd say this is definitely a win. I like the effect that the acacia fiber has. I think it probably is comparable to the inulin bread that I made um, as far as taste and as far as texture. And I don't seem to have the same issues with the acacia fiber as I do with inulin um, as far as digestion and stuff. So I think this is definitely a win for me. I'm gonna keep playing with the acacia fiber in different recipes and amounts, um, but I'm happy with this. And I do think I like the um, two tablespoons of yolk powder better than one tablespoon, although they're very similar. And I wonder if even um, increasing it even more, adding like three tablespoons of the yolk powder would make any difference. Thanks so much for hanging out in the kitchen with me and experimenting with acacia fiber. I hope that was helpful. It is my goal to find all kinds of different options for you guys to play with. I know everyone is in a different area, has a different budget, and so having all kinds of options and different recipes um, to for people to pick from to find what will work is my goal. I will put a link down in the description to my bread list over on Amazon so you can find all of the ingredients and things that I use for baking my egg white bread. I will also put the recipe that I used for this final loaf that I think was the best down in the description so you can find that there. I hope you guys are all doing great and I will see you again in another video.